What is going on everyone? My name is Anson and welcome back to a brand new video. So in today's video, we're going to go ahead and learn, well, you all are going to learn Express.js. So uh, I actually made a tutorial on Express about like roughly two years ago, but I figured it, it's better to make a, a new series in 2022. So let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, what exactly is Express.js? Well, Express.js is a web framework that you can use to build uh, server-side applications. So you can pretty much build APIs for your clients and that API can perform server-side tasks such as saving data to a database. You can schedule cron jobs. Um, it can also You can also build real-time applications too with Express, with uh, Socket.io for example. And you can build literally anything you want with Express. Okay, so typically in web applications or in software, majority of the time, if it's like a web application, for example, it will oftentimes have a server side to it if it needs to do things such as creating users, persisting users. Uh, maybe you need to keep track of the user's invoices. You want to save that to the database. Basically, anything that you can think of that needs to be done server side, you would pretty much do that using Express. Okay, Express is just the framework that we can use to make it easy for us to build these server-sided applications. Okay, so what we're going to be doing in this tutorial, or in this tutorial series rather, is we're going to be starting from the basics all the way from the very beginning. We're going to go from setting up a simple Express app to setting up some simple GET requests, POST requests. I'm going to show you all how to get data from our Express application. I'm going to show you how we can create data with our Express application. I'm going to show you how we can connect to a database, both MySQL and MongoDB. And I'm going to show you all how we can connect to it using a, a, uh, an ORM, also known as an Object Relational Mapper. And uh, later on, we'll probably get into more complicated stuff, such as sessions, uh, authentication, uh, and more, more, more complicated uh, concepts as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the prerequisites. So I'm assuming that you all already know the basics of JavaScript. You're familiar with Node as well. And you also have Node.js installed. If you don't have Node.js installed, please make sure you go ahead and install it because you're going to obviously run into issues if you don't have it installed. So if you want to install Node, just go to nodejs.org download the latest version. I currently have version 16, I believe. So I have version 16.13.1, but depending on what time or when you're watching this video, this version might be a little bit outdated, okay? But either way, Express has been around for a very long time, so even if you're running version 17, it might still work. So um, yeah, but just make sure you have Node.js installed. And I also have NPM installed as well. Okay, uh, make sure you have a text editor. That's pretty obvious. Uh, I used Visual Studio Code, and that's what we're going to use for this tutorial series. And also, uh, make sure you download Postman. Uh, if you don't want to use Postman, you can actually use any HTTP client you want. But I personally use Postman. I think it's great. It's really easy to use. And we're going to be using Postman to make post requests, uh, pull requests, delete, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I'm going to show you how to uh, pass in headers, things like that. So make sure you download Postman or use uh, whatever alternative uh, HTTP client you want. Okay. I think that's pretty much all we need to mention in terms of the prerequisites. So let's go ahead and just set the project. So right now I'm in my Windows PowerShell. Um, if you're on a Mac, you would use your uh, terminal or iTerm. If you're on Linux, you use the built-in terminal, right? All we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new directory and I'm going to call it express uh, JS tutorial. Okay. So you can see that we'll just create, I'm going to CD into it right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type NPM init hyphen Y and all the code will be in the, uh, in, in, in a Git repository. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up in a way so that uh, there's going to be either different commits or different branches for each tutorial. Uh, so for example, after like, let's, let's say for example, the next episode, what we're going to do after we finish setting up our project, I'm going to show you the basics of actually, you know, setting up 
um, you know, the app, setting up a get request, and I'll, I'll I'll write a commit message for that. So that way you all can see through each version and follow along a lot easier. Okay. So what I just did right now was I just typed npm init hyphen y to just set up our, our folder with a package.json file. And then what's next is we're going to go ahead and install Express.js. So all we do is just type npm i express, hit enter, and there you go. It's done. That was pretty quick. Okay. That's, whoops, that's all we're going to need to install. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code right now. Okay, so right now I have my Visual Studio Code open up. Let's go ahead and close this. And let's take a look at our package.json file. We can see that we have the express dependency listed right over here. Okay, now what I'm going to do next is completely optional, but I do recommend you do it. I'm going to install uh, Nodemon locally. And what this will do, the reason I actually have Nodemon installed globally, but the reason why I'm doing it locally is so that when you clone this GitHub repository, and if you don't have Nodemon installed globally, it'll actually just run the Nodemon that's installed locally inside here. You can see that inside this .bin folder, this Nodemon command is actually over here, the, Nod the Nodemon binary. So you can actually run Nodemon locally instead of if you don't have it installed globally, which is what I actually recommend as well. And we're going to set up some scripts. So what, here's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to go inside uh, and create a source folder. Okay. And I'm going to create a new file called index.js. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into package.json file. And I'm going to actually just create a script called start. And this will just uh, use the node command. And we're going to reference the uh, the source dot the source slash index dot js file okay and i'm going to set up another script called start colon dev so this is a dev script and it's going to use the nodemon binary or it's going to use the nodemon command and the reason why we're using nodemon is because this will actually restart our application upon changes so that way we don't have to exit out of our application that's running in the terminal and restart it every single time Nodemon will watch changes and whenever it detects a change, it will restart the whole application with the latest changes. Okay. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and just write a console log just to make sure everything works. Okay, so let me just run the script. So we can run the script by doing npm run start or npm start and it works just fine. And you can see that it prints out hello and then it just exits. If I do npm run start dev, you're going to see that it logs hello and then it says clean exit wait for changes before we start perfect okay so now that we have that running let's go ahead and set up the actual project now okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and import uh express so const express equals require express just like this so what this does is this imports the entire express library and it actually, uh, it actually, the, the module actually exports a function. So express itself, we can actually call this. Okay. And when we call that function, it's going to return an instance of an app or like an express app. And that's what we're going to actually be using to set up our application. So for example, if I do const app and I go ahead and reference express and I call it, this is going to give us an instance of an express application. So what we can do next is we can go ahead and actually listen to a port because right now, if we just have this express call, it's not going to do anything. We need to actually listen to a port. So that way we can actually start listening to requests coming in, right? So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and set a variable called port and I'm going to set this port to 3001. Okay. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to reference the app variable. I'm going to call the listen method. And this is going to take in a port. Okay. So port is going to be 3001. And what that means is that when we actually want to uh, reference our application, we want to visit it, we need to go to our local host port 3001 in order to actually make requests to this application. 
I'm also going to go ahead and add a callback function. And this will allow us to just, you know, do some logging, for example. So I can go ahead and say running express server on port. port. Okay. So let's go ahead and go into our terminal. And you can see that right now it says running express server on port 3001. So if I go ahead and visit my browser and I type in localhost port 3001, you're going to see that it says cannot get, and that's totally fine because we haven't implemented any routes to handle. Okay, right now all we've done was we just listened to a port. We opened up this port for communication, right? So, for example, we can now visit our application on port 2001, but because we don't have any routes defined, right? We don't have any routes that are being implemented in our Express app. We cannot visit any route currently. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. I just want to show you how to set up the project very quickly. In the next episode, I'm going to teach you about get requests, what they are, what the purpose of it is, and I'm going to show you how we can implement that inside our Express server. Okay, so this, this episode was just focused on setting up the server. Next episode, we're going to actually set up a simple get request. So thank you for watching, and I will see you all in the next episode. Peace out.